Hi there, everyone. Uh, my name is Kyle Nightingale. I'm with the Department of Environment Communications team, and I'll be the moderator for today's uh, info session on proposed amendments to the air emissions regulation. Uh, thank you, everyone, for being here. Uh, just a few folks uh, signed on so far, um, so we'll maybe give it a minute or two before we get started. But uh, just want to introduce you to the other two folks that are on the on the um, uh, session today. Um, but first off, I just want to note while we're on a virtual platform, we would like to acknowledge that we are broadcasting from the traditional territory of the Tan Quachin Council and the Kwan Dun First Nation. Um, joining us today on behalf of the government of Yukon is Liz Barker, Environmental Protection Analyst with the Department of Environment, who will run through a presentation on the proposed amendments to the air emissions regulation. We also have Jackie Taylor, a policy analyst with our policy team here, who is here to take some notes uh, on today's session. Um, for the duration of this presentation, you will be muted. However, we welcome you to submit written questions through the chat feature. We also welcome you to type your name and the organization you represent into the chat so we know who is here with us today. Following the presentation, we'll try to address the top three or four questions we see coming into the chat. Uh, but we also welcome you to raise your hand by hitting the hand raise button at the top of your screen if you'd like to, if you prefer to ask a question verbally. This information session is scheduled to last an hour uh, and end by 1130. Um, so before we start, I would just like to acknowledge that this session is being recorded. And if you have any concerns, you can reach out to me directly. Uh, I'm now going to hand it over to Liz. It looks like we've got quite a few folks who have joined us now, so I think it's it's OK to get started. Liz, go ahead. OK, great. Thanks, Kyle. Hi, everyone, and thanks for attending this info session. Um, so as Kyle mentioned, today I'll be discussing our proposed amendments to the air emissions regulations uh, regarding the use of commercial and institutional biomass burning systems. So I'll begin with a, a brief background on these amendments, uh, followed by a description of the proposed amendments. I'll then get into the topics we are seeking feedback on. And finally, we'll have some time for comments and questions at the end of the session. Um, so again, as Kyle mentioned, please hold any comments or questions to the end. Alternatively, you can uh, put them into the chat while I'm speaking. So why are we amending the air emissions regulations? Uh, these amendments are a commitment under Yukon's climate change strategy, Our Clean Future. So one of the objectives in Our Clean Future um, is to increase the use of biomass as a heating source in the territory uh, with a focus on commercial and institutional buildings. And we know that biomass burning systems, <clears throat> excuse me, can release pollutants and impact air quality. So we wanted to make sure that we were also addressing the air pollution aspect um, of increased biomass use. Uh, so you can see it's on the slide right here. Um, action item H24 in our clean future is to amend the air emissions regulations to regulate air emissions from commercial and institutional biomass burning systems to minimize the release of harmful air pollutants. So we have three proposed amendments to the regulation. Uh, they're all listed here. The first amendment we are proposing is to add the operation um, of commercial and institutional biomass burning systems to Schedule 1 of the air emissions regulations. So for those who are not familiar, uh, Schedule 1 of the air emissions regulations is uh, it's a list of activities that require a permit to undertake. Uh, so some examples of what's currently in there would be things like mining, quarrying, um, operation of diesel generators, and operation of incinerators. So in order for that amendment to make sense, we also need to define biomass in the regulation, uh, which is the second proposed amendment. And we need to define commercial and institutional, um, which is our third proposed amendment. Uh, so in terms of how the regulation itself is actually changing, um, it will just be these three items. 
So to make these amendments, we are looking for feedback on the following topics. Uh, the first one is defining commercial and institutional systems as systems greater than 150 kilowatts of heat output. Uh, so again, the commitment in our clean future is focused on regulating air emissions from commercial and institutional systems. So that's that's large scale biomass burning systems. Um, I do want to be very clear here that residential systems are not included uh, within the scope of these amendments. So what we've found is that systems um, which have a heat output of less than 150 kilowatts um, already meet CSA or the Canadian Standards Association um, emission standards, which are included in the National Building Code of Canada. Um, so those systems are already subject to a form of regulation. By defining commercial and institutional as uh, systems with a heat output of greater than 150 kilowatts, um, we are capturing those large scale systems that are not already covered by the National Building Code. And we are avoiding a situation um, where systems below 150 kilowatts essentially become uh, double regulated. So in terms of that, uh, these are the questions that we are looking for feedback on. And I will remind everyone that these questions are all listed in the discussion paper uh, that was included in the original information session email. Um, so we don't need answers to these right now. You can sit with these, you can think about them um, and submit your feedback to us before November 18th. So the questions are, what comments, concerns, or recommendations do you have on the proposal to define commercial and institutional biomass burning systems as systems over 150 kilowatts of heat output? Does using the 150 kilowatt heat output threshold effectively address the large scale biomass burning systems used in commercial and institutional settings? And are there other factors beyond heat output that should be considered when it comes to defining large scale systems. So the next topic we are looking for feedback on is permitting considerations. Uh, so once again, one of the proposed amendments is that an air emissions permit would be required to operate commercial and institutional biomass burning systems. So the Canadian Council of Ministers of the Environment, or CCME, um, have already put in a lot of effort into developing a framework for the regulation of biomass burning systems, and we are considering adopting that framework for permitting purposes. Um, so the, the CCME framework is a three-tiered framework that sets out requirements based on various factors like the size of the biomass system, the population density of the area, and existing air quality. So specifically, we are looking at tier one of the framework. Um, since those requirements were developed for a lower population density uh, in rural and in northern communities. So here is what those requirements actually look like. Um, and I will go through this table. So on the left, uh, we have table nine, which sets out requirements for systems that are greater than 150 kilowatts, uh, but less than 1000 kilowatts. Um, so there are requirements around emissions coming out of those systems. So you can see here specifically for particulate matter and carbon monoxide. Uh, and these emission standards are actually from the European Union Emission Standard 303-5, um, which a lot of the larger scale systems are actually certified to. Uh, so a lot of the larger systems already meet these emission standards. There are also requirements around operation of the system. Um, so that would be automatic fueling, requirements around fuel quality. Uh, so that would be to follow the vendor specifications for fuel quality. Uh, there are requirements around tuning or, or maintenance, um, and that would be to follow the manufacturer's specifications. Uh, in terms of stack testing, uh, which is when somebody actually samples the emissions coming out of the stack as the unit is running, um, for systems between 150 and 1,000 kilowatts, uh, stack testing would only be required uh, if a large volume of complaints were received or if there was great environmental concern with the system. 
Uh, and finally, for monitoring, uh, which refers to air quality monitoring, uh, there are no requirements um, for systems 150 kilowatts to 1000 kilowatts. Now, there's also uh, table 10 in those CCME um, uh, requirements, and this sets out what we'd be looking for systems that are greater than 1000 kilowatts. So these are these are very, very large systems. Uh, so they also have specific emission standards um, for particulate matter and carbon monoxide. Uh, they also have requirements for the operation and fuel quality that are the same as the ones in Table 9. Uh, they would require, however, annual maintenance or tuning, um, and they would require stack testing upon commissioning. So that would be upon startup of the unit, stack testing would be required. Uh, and for systems greater than 1,000 kilowatts, they would also require uh, continuous stack monitoring. Um, so the, what that looks like is typically sensors are placed in the stack and they uh, have, submit real-time readings um, as the unit is running. So the questions that we are looking for feedback around those CCME requirements uh, are what comments, concerns, or considerations do you have on meeting the requirement outlined in tier one? Uh, are there any specific challenges to meeting manufacturer specifications or performing maintenance on biomass burning systems? Should Yukon use tier one of the CCME framework to regulate commercial and institutional biomass? If not, please provide rationale. And if a permit is required for commercial and institutional biomass systems, do you have any comments or considerations on when the proposed permit requirement should come into effect for existing biomass systems? So we have a, a few more questions to help us get a, a full understanding of what the current state of these systems is in the territory and to help us understand how these proposed amendments uh, may impact owners of existing systems. So if you if you currently own or operate a system that's larger than 150 kilowatts, um, you know, we're looking for information about the size of the system. Is it certified to any emission standards? Uh, do you do you face any challenges in operating the system? Um, you know, we're looking for information uh, about permitting concerns. So uh, do you have any concerns about meeting those requirements um, from the CCME? And uh, was there any Yukon government funding provided or uh, was a partnership formed uh, through the creation, installation or operation of your biomass burning system? And finally, we have some questions around future installations as well. Uh, so questions like, have you have you thought about installing one of these systems? Do you have plans to install one of these systems? Um, you know, if you do, do you know what size system? And would knowing that certain biomass burning systems um, will be subject to, you know, regulation through the air emissions regulations, would that affect your decision to install one of these systems? So that's that's an overview of the proposed amendments uh, and the topics that we are looking for feedback on. So you you can submit your feedback via email, uh, letter mail, or phone call, and the contact information is provided here. Uh, I will say that it is most beneficial for us to receive written feedback if possible. So um, email or or letter mail. And we can also set up additional meetings, uh, either virtual or in person upon request. Uh, so if that is something you're interested in, feel free to just send us an email um, or give us a call. So yeah, we can we can go ahead with any any comments or any questions that anyone might have. <laughs> 